Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker, and here we go. Uh, this is going to give us a really, really good test of the new battlefield uh, terrain enhancements, which were included in a, uh, a couple of versions back, actually. A couple of versions back of Bannerlord, they did update the game in the way that it actually deals with various environments. So, for example, if I'm going to do battle on this hillside here, Hopefully, it's going to make it so that the battlefield itself will take from the surrounding environment on the campaign map and actually make that very, very similar. So, for example, ooh, ooh okay, we got we got some pretty big, uh, yeah, some pretty big issues right here. Pretty big issues. But if I can take these guys out in separate battles then that shouldn't be that bad. Or at the very least, we should have a somewhat easier time of things. So let's try it out. Um, you can see here, they actually do have uh, more combat strength than us. And you can see that I'm actually on the hill. I am, I am the one that is above this fellow. So this is a good, actually a really good test for us to be able to see exactly what's gonna go down with the terrain enhancements that they made in that previous version because i know that we've actually you know been doing a whole bunch of battles obviously but it would be cool to try it out again hmm well i gotta say i i'm not um i'm not that impressed by this actually because um you, you obviously saw where we were right we were on an extremely large steep hill it could very well be that just because this is a mod, it is not mm, is not being so accurate with the terrain enhancements, unfortunately. So that might very well be partially the case. In other words, we just don't have um, you know the detail in and around that area. Maybe there is not a uh, there there isn't an option. <laughs> there could just be not an option for. Um, for the battle to choose from, basically, you know, for a battlefield like that. But I find that hard to believe, personally, because I feel like there, there probably should be something like that in the uh, in the base game, at least. Because otherwise, you know, I mean, what what are we uh, <laughs> what are we gonna do if there's ever like a hill a hillside and we all of a sudden, you know, uh, start a start a fight? on the hillside and then what we're in a flat battlefield i mean that doesn't make any sense does it doesn't make any sense whatsoever so there is a bit of an issue there but uh i don't as i say i don't think it is due to the mod personally i mean that's the only thing i can really think that it might be because i mean without you know thinking that it's that it could be i don't know I mean, what else could it be? There, there, there's not really much. But that, as I say, I don't understand why the mod would actually make a difference because it's been very accurate so far. That's the whole point. Every single battlefield we've we've been in has been um, pretty pretty accurate, I guess. Right? Pretty accurate. I mean, most of the time we're we're like you know seeing things that are very much on the uh, on the world map we're not um we're not seeing something completely different at the very least not like this for example this is a, a pretty <laughs> this is a pretty extreme version i suppose of that and uh, i'm now just reminded that i have this amazing weapon as well i'm really really pleased that we were able to find this and apparently people have said that this is lu bu's weapon from the dynasty warriors series and I actually, <laughs> that is uh, that is actually super cool because I really like that um, that franchise of games. I absolutely adore those. I think they are super super fun to play. Um, but yeah, I um, I obviously uh, didn't realize. I obviously didn't realize. Uh, I don't usually play as Lu Bu or uh, you know really. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of funny actually because generally I um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not that familiar with the series as much as I thought. That might actually be the reason. But yeah, that's very, very cool, nevertheless, that you uh, you let me know about that. There were a bunch of people that, uh, that commented that. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Because that, uh, that adds the enjoyment. You know, that adds a, a pretty significant amount of enjoyment to using this weapon because it's just so massive. It really is. I mean, just just look at the length of this thing. It's absolutely crazy. And it can do so much damage as well. If you get a good run-up, it can do 
so much. I mean, really, look at look at that. Uh, 244 damage against a skirmisher. And, I mean, look, look at that. I literally hit that Huskarl in the head with it. And it did six, 261. And I was, wow. Uh, you know, that's just so nice. And uh, I, I think I'm, I'm probably... I'm, I mean, I'm not unkillable, of course. Because we've seen me uh, actually, you know, get eliminated uh, a couple of times. But... I am very resilient nowadays in uh, in this mod, thanks to the uh, the HP per level thing. So that's really making a huge difference. But um, yeah, apart from that, I am just very pleased with our with our progress. And I'm going to be telling my archers to charge in the meantime as well. I mean, we might as well use our bow a little bit more too, because I do have the ability to do that. You know, why not? I've got 42 arrows remaining, or I did have 42 arrows remaining. And now we have a lot less. Well, five less. Yes. <laughs> five less. Uh, I mean, technically, five arrows. You, you, you never know what you can do with five arrows. Maybe maybe you can uh, you, you know, you can save your life with five arrows, potentially. You know, I, I've been in those situations where I just wish I had one more arrow to eliminate that one final enemy that would definitely, assuredly kill me in melee combat. And having the ability to use a ranged weapon would have saved my life. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes that just doesn't happen. And sometimes you just have to bite the bullet, or in this case, bite the very large polearm slash sword slash hammer that is coming towards your face. And then you have to, you know, uh, bite the dust, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's kind of a more appropriate thing, considering look at how much dust is on the screen right now. It's just I immense. Uh, it's really, really strange as well that the um, the trees on the world map, they're really luxurious and green and lush and they're, they're you know, they're very, um, I don't know, very young looking trees. And these trees, as you can quite clearly tell, are not that at all. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a little bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, that is a little bit weird, but... As I say, it's probably something to do with the fact that we are on this weird hill. And uh, maybe it doesn't count it as a hill or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that seems to be a victory for us. And we actually ended up losing a grand total of five units. I actually uh, told my cavalry to stay back there because we actually told them to, um, to charge in beforehand. Should I make another companion? Not sure if I should make another companion. Mm. If I make another companion, okay. So here's the thing, yeah. If you miss this, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again because maybe you missed it because I think I, I saw a comment about this and I was wanting to address it. Basically, here's the thing: if I were to make an obscure soul judge knight a companion and then make them into a vassal, it wouldn't work because the way that distinguished service works at the moment in this mod at least, is because the Obscure Soul Judge Knight doesn't have any culture-based armor on, Distinguished Service will basically go, okay, this unit is going to be Calradian culture. And so as a result, because of course there is no such culture in the game, because this is a mod of course, it then crashes if you attempt to make them into a vassal. Whereas if I were to make uh, one of these eggplants, for example, a, uh, a companion, and then into a vassal, you could do that because the eggplants are wearing Zan Dynasty armor and it makes their culture into Zan Dynasty. So technically you can manipulate that however you like and you can basically make it so that you can decide whatever culture you want your companions to be. Which, in my opinion, is actually really cool. And personally, I would love to see more of that kind of stuff. Because, I, you know, we've, we've been playing Land of Seeker for uh, quite a while now. And I would love to be able to see that in the base game as well. Where we actually have the ability. And I mean, obviously, we would probably be able to do that nevertheless with, um, you know, with Distinguished Service. Because, of course, it works with... Um, this version of the game. You know, of course it works with this version of the game. Uh, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be able to play on it, of course. But yes, anyway, 
The point is, I would love to be able to see that kind of customization. I would love to be able to see that. And the only reason why we're actually seeing that kind of customization is because we have a custom troop tree. Of course, we do have a custom troop tree in the form of um, My Little Warband. We are able to use that. As far as I'm aware, it is updated for this version of the game as well. Um, but having the ability to create vassals from that is also really, really cool. So I'm actually very much looking forward to seeing what we can do in the base game when we get back to that. Although, to be fair, I think it might, I'm not sure, it might be time for us to actually uh, create just a just a plain old uh, plain old native series in Bannerlord. No mods, no mods whatsoever, or at the very least, very minimal gameplay influencing mods. Because the thing with that is that obviously with the uh, with the release of the game, uh, you know, fast approaching, uh, it's um, it's probably going to be kind of useful for people to to know about that kind of stuff. You know, considering uh, a lot of people are going to be playing the game on console for the first time and uh it maybe will be kind of interesting to see how the game holds up without any mods because that's the thing i'm using very little mods in this particular series with the exception of distinguished service of course and having distinguished service obviously does make things mm, i wouldn't say does it make it easy? Yeah, I guess it does make it a little bit easier because I am actually able to, apart from the fact that our companions are pretty strong, I wouldn't say that companions are the main reason why it makes it really, really powerful or makes it easier. The one thing that I would say is the ability to make eggplants into vassals. That is the one thing that is actually making things that much that much easier for us because that basically makes it so that distinguished service as soon as you get someone that has accrued a lot of kills in a particular fight you can turn them into a companion you can give them really significant skill bonuses from the promotion from distinguished service and then you can turn them into vassals and most of these vassals are going to have if they've done their job well and if they've gotten a lot of kills in, in that particular fight then they'll have about, you know, uh, I don't know, 200, 250, maybe even 300 if you're lucky, steward skill. And steward, of course, does increase your, um, your maximum company size. And so doing that makes things a little bit easier for me. Because that means that I actually don't have to go around trying to find... I mean, technically, I could, you know, um, level up regular units. So, for example, I could level up um, in the case of the base game. If I had, if you know, if I was playing with the Batanians or something like that, I could level up some Batanian Fian champions, and those guys would eventually gain enough kills to be able to get a promotion. And then we could create a Batanian vassal from that action. But then you've got to realize that the promotion is probably not going to be that significant. The promotion is probably going to be pretty, uh, pretty low, um, all things considered. The, uh, the skill bonus or the skill boost that you're going to get from that is probably not going to be extremely, extremely high. Because, let's face it, my eggplants are pretty good and they do have the ability to do massive damage they they are getting a lot of opportunities to do that whereas a batanian fian champion one of them or a handful of them are not really going to be in such a extreme critical mass situation where we currently have that going on right now you know we have a lot of eggplants literally just able to fire they're just able to fire really really easily at the opponent and it makes things so much simpler for us. I'm actually going to tell them to go a little bit closer here because they're way too spread out in my opinion. So I'd like them to go a little bit closer to each other. And ooh, now this is this is actually going to be a little bit problematic for me right now. Not entirely sure if I'm even going to be able to do something here. But I'm very much wanting to make sure that we run some interference at the very least. But you can see exactly why I'm a bit worried because these guys are... They're, they're closing in, but they're closing in with their archers? <laughs> they're, close. <laughs> they're closing in with their archers. Okay. Um, that's a bit weird. All right. That is a little bit weird. I'm actually going to tell my uh, my archers to do an auto-delegate, just in case they wanted to do 
some skirmishing. You never know. Sometimes archers do like to skirmish instead of go into melee, but it seems like my forces actually do want to go into melee, and they are indeed charging, which is perfectly fine. I don't mind if they charge. They have the exact same skill uh, with, uh, with ranged as they do with melee, so they are completely fine to do whatever they want to do. That's exactly the reason why I designed them in that, in that way, you know, so that they would be good at both avenues of attack. And it seems like it's actually working out quite nicely. Whoa, okay, that was actually some significant damage right there. Really kind of problematic that we've taken such a heavy hit. Uh, that is going to definitely affect us in future battles, if we are actually even going to get into a future battle here. Maybe we're not going to, but I do need to continue walking around here. Uh, can my guys actually charge properly into the enemy archers? See, now this is the main problem that we are going to have. Yeah, mm. I'm hopeful that I won't get killed, uh, me doing this, me running through all of these archers here, but yeah, okay, so as I said, the main problem um, is my forces are scattered. My forces are significantly scattered. You can see here, look at how much, uh, yeah, we're taking a lot of casualties right now. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to do a little bit of a strategic retreat. This is... See now, this is what I was talking about in the previous episode. I said, "Hey, yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna do some more risky stuff. You know, we're gonna do some more risky stuff. Try to get a little bit more tension infused through the series. Because obviously, here's the thing: we've been pretty unstoppable so far, and I think that it might be a nice idea for us to try and take a couple of risks. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So let me see if I can do something like this. Let's just spread them out a little bit. I can't even see where the enemy." are so this is going to be kind of interesting but apart from that let's do this i am very low in hp and the enemy is going to have replenished their ammunition uh as far as i'm aware wait a minute do they have any archers yeah i do see some archers hiding behind the spearmen over there how many do they have they have 161 <laughs> Okay, they have 161 archers. We have how many? Uh, 89. Yes, 89. Okay, well that's actually not too bad. I am going to have to play a little bit more reserved this time around. Not a big fan of that, as you may know. I do not like staying back. I like to have some fun, get stuck in there as best I can. But, well... Having fun is also about staying alive, so that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. We're going to obviously try to eliminate these Mogrians. I really do not want them in the back line trying to murder my people. Not a big fan of that. Oh, well, that guy took a massive hit from someone. And yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have now dealt with one of their cavalry formations. Now we just need to make sure that we don't get absolutely massacred by the remaining forces. But you can see here exactly the reason why I wanted to retreat. This is the reason. Us being able to have a further consolidation of our formation. We really do not want to have a situation where all of our people are running around randomly in all kinds of different directions. We do not want that. Because the more that that happens, the less effective my forces are going to be. Because, of course, of course not. You know, they're going to literally be in situations where they're targeting random people. They're targeting random people, they're running around in all kinds of places, not really focusing on the same targets, and as a result, they are so much less effective. It's, it's not even funny how much less effective um, units can be if you are not careful with coordinating their attacks appropriately. And you saw that in the previous round of, the, of, of fighting. It was actually kind of scary to, to see that. And that actually speaks volumes about how good a commander are you, you know? How good a commander actually does impact things quite a bit. Even though you may think, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I've got some great units. And yeah, I, I, I admittedly, you know, I have... I have admitted that in, in previous episodes that we have really, really good units. And that was the reason, quote unquote, why we were able to win that battle. That's, that's, what, that's the reason I've given in the past. And it's true. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got great units. However, 
in those situations, like for example, the previous round, if your units get scattered, and this is a this is a nice little nice little beginner tip if you're thinking about playing, you know, when the game releases, um, you know, on the on consoles. If you're thinking about, you know, going into one of your first organized battles and you have a relatively decent army, let's say you've got some, you know, tier fours, maybe you've got some tier threes, tier fours, tier fives, maybe if you're lucky you have something higher than that, dependent on if you're playing a mod, well, actually, no, you're not going to be playing a mod because obviously you're on a console, sorry, yes, I know, um, I don't know why they don't support those, to be honest, I think it would be very cool if they could, in, at least in single player, okay, in single player, yes, give the, give the console, you know, uh, some kind of marketplace where it's moderated, you know, that would be very cool, anyway, obviously no mods, okay, no mods, but anyway, just go in tier three, tier four, tier five, maybe tier sixes, depending on if you're if you're lucky to have some of those. And otherwise, just make sure every single time you're going to be going into a battle, you want to be very careful about how your units are responding to the enemy attack. For example, you do not want your archers to scatter too much. You do not want your archers to run in different places. You don't want them to get attacked, uh, you know, by themselves out in the middle of nowhere. Same thing with the cavalry. The cavalry are inevitably going to be running around trying to do hit and run attacks. That is what they are designed to do. And that is exactly what they will do most of the time. In Warband, that was obviously very different because cavalry basically wouldn't uh, do that. They wouldn't do hit and run attacks most of the time. You'd have to manually command them. But in Bannerlord, they do do that. They do do the uh, the whole hit and run strategy. And that's very, very nice. You know, that is a very nice thing for them to do. <gasps> My wife died. Okay. Well, uh, I didn't I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize that. Okay, that is... That is really, really harsh, actually. Uh, yeah, that... Okay, and I said in the previous... Uh, didn't I say in the previous episode? I said something like... Um, oh, why do I have so many... <gasps> Are you serious? Oh, wow. I am so stupid. Oh, wow. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, it's because Amaliana's dead. I mean, yeah, it's because she, you know, it's because she died. Okay, it's because she died. That's the reason why we've lost our steward now. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of a couple of people here. Nothing, uh, nothing too dramatic. Um, okay, that's really, really bad. Yeah, we lost our quartermaster, as you can quite clearly tell. So I'm just gonna make this guy who's got 300 steward. Um, he's gonna be the the new new quartermaster person. And um, yeah, okay. So apart from the fact that I am now reeling from the loss of our spouse. This is uh, not particularly good because she was amazing. She survived for an extremely long period of time. She had amazing skills and I would have very much liked to have seen her survive until the very end of our campaign here. But well, you know, you, well, if, if you've seen some of my other series, uh, most notably the Sturgeon Viking series, if you've seen that series, then you know my luck. My luck with spouses is legendarily bad yes yes it is it is extremely bad so i'm i'm i gotta say i'm actually kind of surprised that she survived this long but yeah it's pretty awful okay well i can't do much about it unfortunately but um we can only hope that she had a decent time uh, with us until her demise i guess I, I i don't really know what to say to be honest i think that's i think that's pretty awful i think that is pretty awful so i uh yeah i guess we can just take revenge upon the uh upon the waltus as much as we possibly can and then yeah go on from there i guess but anyway let's just try and sell some stuff here i don't know why i have so much stuff why is um is it wait a minute wait a minute hmm might be my horse situation. Uh, maybe. I'm overburdened. Yes, I am overburdened a massive amount. I actually don't know why. Is it the grapes? And the butter and all that stuff? 
I mean, I don't have a huge amount of um, of food, actually. I mean, I don't think I have a... No, look, I've only got 424. Uh, so that's kind of strange. I'm not entirely sure why we are so over-encumbered. But uh, it could also be because um, Amaliana might have actually had a particular perk in steward that improved our carry capacity as you can see right here there's one right there 10 percent increased carry capacity for troops or 20 percent increased carry capacity for pack animals so it could very well be that she had these things and was actually um, helping us a significant amount as a result so now that's even worse, you see. That is even worse. That's the reason, yeah, that's the reason why it's really, really bad that she has now died. However, we have a massive party size with our new steward, which I suppose is okay. <laughs> I mean, I prefer the perks, to be honest. Because um, I'm, now, I'm now kind of weirded out by the fact that I am so over-encumbered. Because uh, I... I, I guess I just have so much... I have so many weapons, I guess. I, I think that's probably the reason, right? Yeah, that is probably the reason. So, I guess the best thing I can do is just smelt some stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, wonderful, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, alright. Well, I guess the best thing I can do is just move on. And, uh, yeah, you can see here that we actually took this over here. Which was part of the Waltus, and uh, my forces are actually moving through their castles now, which is actually super nice. And the reason why they're able to do this, do, do you want to guess, is because we're here, distracting the enemy as much as we possibly can. In my opinion, at least, that is, uh, that is the reason. And I am very pleased to say that I feel like, I feel like we're doing a pretty nice job. I feel like we're doing a pretty nice job. Anyway, um, yeah, my forces are actually doing some pretty nice work here. And, uh, wait a minute. Where are my party... Um, no, not the wages. Are they not giving me any money? Hmm. That's a, that's a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure why my, um... Why my, uh... Oh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. That fellow has some um, has some wage reducing perk, doesn't he? Because that's the reason why I'm no longer paying like nine thousand, and instead I'm paying three thousand. That must be the reason, right? Yes, I assume that is the reason. Okay, so unfortunately, because um, okay, yes, indeed, that town has some rebels at it, and uh, you can see here that they have now rose up. Um, or should we say, risen up, and they are now wanting... Whoa, that's a lot of people. Okay, that might be a bit problematic. Um, but yeah, anyway, so they have now risen up, and um, they're now uh, rebelling against us, which is actually not even bad. And there's a reason why it's not bad, because when there is a rebel, uh, rebel force overtaking a particular town, you really don't have to worry about it. And you know why? Because you can take it back relatively, I mean, you know, it's going to cost you a little bit of effort and quite a lot of troops and so on and so forth. But once you do take it back, the loyalty level of that particular fief will be completely maxed out because the rebels are, of course, currying favor to such an extent with the, uh, with the denizens of that particular town that you're going to have an absolutely wonderful time. And it's really not going to be... Um, you know, terribly bad for you. So that's the one thing that you've got to take away from that. That's a pretty good thing, right? So yeah, that's a pretty good thing. Anyway, we are now having an issue where the Walters are uh, attempting to take Lanark Hen Castle. I'm very much hoping that I'll be able to launch my siege against this town before they are able to take it. I hope they don't go in super quickly. But um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if I'm even going to be able to win this battle. Ah, oh, look at this. Yes, they are wanting a peace agreement. Who would have expected that? Ah, yes. Certainly, we all would have... <laughs> we would have expected that, wouldn't we? All right, let's do this. I actually thought they would sally out, to be honest. They have a lot of units, but I don't think they sally out any further unless there is a vassal in the area, which is a bit weird. I think that's a bit weird, but oh well. Mm, I want to give 
Uh, this guy, no. Malethvon might be the bow person. E maybe. Um. E Wait a minute. Oh, those are. Oh, these are really old companions. When my people were uh, thrown weapon people. All right. Yeah. So that's absolutely fine. Just trying to make sure that we have the right commander for the right job, basically, so that my forces are as effective as they possibly can be when we're going into the siege. We're gonna need it. We are gonna need it like no one's business, to be honest. This is gonna be kind of, um, I think, kind of difficult. And uh, I think, I, I actually think we might fail. I think we might fail at this. So let's just cross our fingers and hope that we don't. Wow, we already lost one of my companions. That's a good start, isn't it? And I, I am actually taking massive damage here as well. Uh, yeah, those archers over there are really doing a number on me. And all of these guys... Uh, uh, can I can I survive? Can I survive? <gasps> I managed to survive! Okay, hello there, sirs. Oh. Well, um... <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, well, I, uh... Yeah, you, you know what? You know what? I, uh... I actually want to retreat... Yeah, I actually want to retreat from this. I, uh, <laughs> that was very funny. I gotta say, that was actually hilarious. Uh, I will be, I will be the first one to say that that was amusing, uh, as no one else really. I mean, that is just so. That is that is a classic, actually. That is one of the most classic things that have happened to me. And. Uh, it's so, oh, it's so like me that that would happen, isn't it? Where I would literally think to myself, I've survived, I've survived, and then I get shot in the face. Yeah, yeah, isn't that wonderful? Anyway, there was an army here. They took back Lanok Hen, but as you can see, they literally only have 51 units. Going to take this back off screen, probably defeat the army off screen as well. And then we're going to be... Um, attempting to take some more of the uh, the enemy's fiefs. I'm probably going to be calling for an army as well because uh, we do have someone here that can potentially join us. So that's hopefully going to be kind of nice. I was mostly hoping that my uh, my party members would go off and try to help some of my other vassals because I'm personally doing okay. You know, I'm running interference and um, I'm able to defeat people relatively easily. But maybe it would be a good idea to get a couple of reinforcements from our parties here, here and there. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll see what happens with that. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.